Oh! 
are the King of all kings. You are the Lord of all gods. You are the greatest.
Father, we worship you. Eternal rock of ages, we bless you. Our promoter, our sustainer, our life source. So I will give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thou who sittest on high, but looks low, way down low, to see us, the sons of men, Father, we say thank you. You didn't consider it beneath yourself to say, I will make you my friends. I will make you my sons. I will make you my daughters. Sir, I, I really don't fully, I can't fully ap apprehend why you chose to do it. But Lord, above all, I am grateful. Thank you, Father. What is it that we did for you that made you say that will be your own? There's nothing we did. Heavenly Father, King of glory, thank you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, the, 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 the only true son to go and fetch us, to pay an atoning price for our iniquities, for our transgressions. Lord Jesus, what can we say but to say thank you? We give you the praise. Gentle Holy Spirit, we thank you for your 24-7, 365 day a year continuous protection surveillance and all the things that you do for us you quicken you enable you 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 strengthen sir accept our thanks in jesus name i hide inside the precious blood of the lamb and i ask lord that like moses you put your mouth beside my mouth and father oh lord that your the words that will come forth will be your words and father that they will be words that the entire universe will hear and will hearken to and will cause to come into existence in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, King of glory, I pray, Lord, that all of us who are here present, Lord, will enjoy of your virtue, Amen. your glory, Amen. your healing, Amen. your beauty Amen. in the name of Jesus, that this assembly will stand out. Amen. It will stand out Amen. to the entirety of the world in the name of Jesus. They will look at you. They will look at the people of the world. They will say, these are children of God. Amen. Daddy, you will look down from heaven and you will boast about them. In the name of Jesus. They will be solution providers. They will be solution providers. They will be insight providers. Heavenly Father, King of glory, glory and virtue will flow through them. In Jesus' most exalted name, we have prayed. And the saints of God shall say a powerful Amen. Good afternoon god bless you good to see you today are we good are we good yes, hallelujah praise jesus praise the lord uh today we are doing the final installment of uh, talent is not enough chapter 13 um and it's all about teamwork it's all about teamwork <coughs> Excuse me. Our our Bible text that we'll kick off with is found in Ecclesiastes. Uh, as late Miles Monroe put it, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes four nine through to twelve, and. It reads as follows two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but what to him that is alone when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Praise Jesus. Another anchor verse that I will cite from is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members 
and all the members of that one body being many are one body so so also is christ let me read it from the amplified perhaps it will convey greater meaning this way it says for just as the body is a unity or if you like for just as the body is a team yeah and yet has many parts and all the parts though many form only one body or team so it is with christ the messiah the anointed one praise jesus praise the lord the bible passage i will also just read from quickly is also from first corinthians 12 but from 24 first corinthians 12 from 24 so the bible passage is first corinthians 12 from 24 and it reads as follows for our comely parts have no need but god hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another and whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it and one member be honored all the members rejoice with it verse 27 now ye are the body of christ and members in particular praise the lord so psalm 27 verse 4 says um one thing have i desired of the lord that will i seek after that i may dwell in the house of the lord all, all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple praise jesus the amplified version classic says when he says immediately after the beauty it then says in brackets the sweet attractiveness and the delightful loveliness of the lord and to meditate consider and inquire in his temple praise jesus one of the things that happens when we gather um when we gather like this amen is that we come to behold the beauty of the lord i i recall when i was at uh, when we were when we were sharing at um during wrath I, I i described the glory of god part of the, you know when i was defining it i described it as his part of it as his beauty i think i used the word munificence you see when 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 you god wants us you know from time to time to pause amen to see what he's about amen because when we see what he's about we then aspire and by the power of the holy spirit what we behold we become and when we become what we behold then we become images of his air glory praise jesus do, 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 uh, does this make sense and, and teamwork uh, when i was just looking at team team uh, when i was looking at team, this topic teams i just realized that it is an aspect of the glory of god that it is it is an aspect of the glory of god and and you see the manifestations in so many in so many things god did please explain to me why god thought that one human being was not good enough please explain to me why did he think that adam was not enough everything that is presently constituted in the man and in the woman separately were embedded in the man at the time don't ask me about the reproductive parts i don't understand that part when we get to heaven he'll explain it but you get what i'm saying the skills the i actually think i don't know some people may not agree i mean some people may say this is overly feminist but i actually think uh, that god placed man in authority over the woman not because it was superior but because in fact she is superior in other words their skills the the ability to multitask how many balls they have up in the air at the same time no ball drops Ma, i'm doing one thing i was preparing this morning and she came to tell me about ticket and i'm saying woman leave me alone i am you give me something to do let me do it 
I want to do one thing at a time. That I don't have, I only have that you know that amount of bandwidth. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So I, I, you know that's that's my theory. God just did it that way to create balance. But why did he decide that one was not enough? It had to be two. You see, when you look at John Maxwell's uh, 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 proposition about the law of significance that one one is never enough to create anything great. <laughs> see where it harkens from. See the beginning. The beginning starts in Genesis 2. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so this concept of teams, in truth, it's a God thing. Do you get what I'm saying? It's a God thing. There's no doubt about it. It's a God thing. Praise Jesus. So, 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 God, God is beautiful. There's no doubt about it. He, he's, he's beautiful. He, he's got it all figured out. He's, he's got all the answers. Some are not even here. It's only when you press in. Eh, you are inquiring at his temple, as Psalm 27 tells us. Then you begin to see it. And you begin to see the symmetry and the insights and why things are the way they are. And, you know, you can then... Because when we understand the principles, then it allows the grace of God to flow. When we don't understand his principles and why he does what he does, then the anointing that allows exponential growth, that allows for fulfillment of destiny, that allows you to discover yourself, all those things don't come into reality until you understand the principles. The kingdom of God is a, is a principle-driven kingdom. There's anybody who's telling you it's grace alone, the person's not telling you the truth. There's always... In the kingdom, there's always balance. There's always balance. There's a place for mercy. There's a place for grace. And I, um, I, I constantly aspire for all of that. But there's also a place for principles. Praise Jesus. This, this is, this is, a, this is a, a bit of a digression. But please, please bear with me. Allow me praise him this way, in this small way. When you check what God does, how he stacks up his characteristics his holiness you see it is his holiness that makes him say that even when somebody has sinned but calls on the name of jesus it is his holiness that now restrains him from visiting the person with instant judgment but extending the hand of her mercy do you know the hoops that god went through to get you into this room today do you know how many people we're preaching in the bus and you're saying in your mind, will you keep quiet? I want you to think. Then finally you gave your life. Do you know how many people, what people went through to, for you to be here? People were stoned. People were matter, matter, were killed just for me and you to sit in this room. So when you think of those hoops that God went through, eh, what, what he did to reach through to you, when, when you check your life carefully, how it's almost as if it's a script and everything has been following a particular, you know, everything's following in a, in a particular way. Then you can, you, you can appreciate how beautiful he is. Praise Jesus. <sighs> Father, take all the praise in the name of Jesus. Take all the praise. Nobody, nobody's like you. What's that song? Uh, there's no higher calling. There's no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne. Then the song says, "I'm amazed at your glory, embraced ah, by your mercy." Please tell me what you did to earn it. I, I, as men go, I'm the most I'm not worth it. Father, I give you the praise in the name of Jesus. I'm grateful to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, so, so Romans 1.19, let me just say this quickly and then go on. Romans 1.19 says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and god so that they are without excuse we we can see where god is going when even without reading the bible you can just see it when you process it well the topic we're about to examine shows another aspect of the wonder god is and how awesome he truly is god wants us to see his glory knowing full well that when we see his glory we aspire to be like him and we be transformed into him for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of god that's why teams have become necessary but we all with open face beholding us in the glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory 
unto glory even as by the spirit of god another quick introductory point i want to make is that talent in and of itself is not a guarantee for success that's what this whole book is about talent in and of itself is not a guarantee for success somewhere in the book where john maxwell said somebody was saying somebody was saying uh, oh you are you are talented you might as well begin to do cartwheels because you have a nose and you have a mouth we must recognize that we are holding in our we are holding our lives in trust for god that is we are accountable to him for the life he has given to us and this is the important point and we must constantly be on the lookout how to deploy our talent optimally we must be on the lookout how to deploy our talent optimally or in such fora such as teams that then gives him the glory and gives the maximum benefit to mankind we must constantly be on the lookout where to deploy or how best to deploy our talents optimally that is in a place or in a manner such as we give him maximum glory and be of maximum benefit to mankind So I want to give you some insights into teams before we look at um, truths of teams. So the first one about insights into teams, and I said this before, teams is a God thing. It's a God concept. It's a God concept. You see it in things like, why is God the Father divided into three? See it now. God the Father conceives the idea. God the Son speaks the idea that he has seen from the Father. The Holy Spirit, as the CEO of the group, goes to enforce that word that was spoken, brings it into being. God is a team. And because there's such unity amongst them, even though there are three separate personalities, they act in unity. They act in unison. They don't act divergently. No one pursues his own separate agenda. You see it in, in, in you see manifestations of the fact that it's a God thing, even in the composition of man. Man is a triune being. He's a spirit who lives in a body and possesses a soul. You see it again in the husband and wife relationship. You see it in the husband and wife relationship. And there are a few other instances that I'll cite to you. Um, maybe for ease let me let me just get it out there right now the church we saw it in first Cor first corinthians 12 the church is another is it, the church is a one big team that's why it gives to some apostles give some prophets give some this one teachers this one that one then there's a department that they don't talk about that i realize more and more that is the department is it is a department i'm very i'm very strongly in the department of helps there are some people their own is just to help people they are not they can do other things but to help that's the thing they 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 they, 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 they that is the thing they like to do or no like to do is not quite the word they 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 are just they just gravitate to it they they, they don't need anybody to when they say she will before you finish saying will they're out there doing the thing praise jesus number two teams allow or provide a platform for talent to shine optimally teams allow everyone's talents to shine teams allow everyone to shine it allows everybody to be significant it allows everybody to be significant some people may think that it is only the pulpit gifts that are their problem who says that it was do you know the number of people that have been walking behind the scenes for that person to stand at that pulpit that morning or that afternoon in the afternoon undisturbed unhindered to deliver a message 
those people are just as important as the one that is standing because if they hadn't done their jobs that person wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to stand do you get my, do you catch my drift everybody in god's sight is significant and god has chosen to divvy up whatever gifts and talents he's given on the basis that everybody is going to get a share everybody's going to get a share how does how does uh, how did david put it he says both the people that stay by the stuff and those who go to fight they shall share alike oh you guys don't know it it happened at ziklag now when some people were tired david said they should stay when they brought the booty back the people were, who went say we're not going to divide with these people david said we will share alike the one who stays with the spoil the one who stays with the baggage and the one who goes to war praise jesus um the third one eh? the third insight about teams is that you know god is like um an entrepreneur he's like an entrepreneur entrepreneur uh, and he has a board so he's god is like the chairman of the board uh jesus is like the ceo and then the holy spirit is like the coo and in order to allow the the corporate purposes of heaven to be fulfilled like any business he must recruit people do you get and, and he cannot recruit only accountants <laughs> he can't recruit only it staff he can't recruit only gates men do you get what i'm saying he must recruit a diverse set of people with different talents because it is in the strength of the entity depends on the spread of the talents god's primary goal is to save the greatest number of people that can be saved and because of that he needs a diverse bunch of people to make it happen praise jesus so he sits down and asks himself who and who uh, has the necessary giftings and talents in order to handle one important aspect of kingdom business praise jesus do you understand what i'm saying in atrofica there's one boy he's <laughs> one of our one of our choir, choir members he <laughs> very interesting fellow wonderful fellow but he has one talent if it is somebody's birthday he's the first to put it on the whatsapp platform it is somebody's birthday let's celebrate this person if you left that work to me Kai! people just leave on mass because me I barely asked my wife now she'll tell you on the day of my birthday the week to my birthday she said what are you doing i said i don't know i don't even know why because it's not the birthday i'm looking at it is what are we supposed to be getting done next that's the one that is worrying me it's not but this is my birthday now it's me now it's, it's not my birthday i know do you get what i'm saying anyway so 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 let's let me say this because this is also important put differently here the team harnesses talent to bring about God's purposes and cause benefit for man. Put differently, God has brought about teams, he's brought about teams to allow teams harness talent in order to bring out God's purposes and cause benefit for man. Talent number four is an aspect of god's glory talent is like god's glory that's been planted in a man and this bears repeating but god plants talent in men so that his purposes get fulfilled and the people around us get a blessed Thank you and ultimately he then gets a uh, glory praise jesus Amen. number five god in his sovereignty i i use that because i cannot fully explain why he's chosen to do so but god in his sovereignty has set up systems and these systems he sets up tend to be um dependent on one another or interdependent and also collaborative so in the human body for example the human body is made up of several subsystems that all work together to ensure that you and me are moving alive and all of that so you have the circulatory system that you know 
begins with the heart pumps bl blood to the lungs and the, you know various parts of the body there's uh, there's oxygen intake and then it's pumped around the whole body that's the circulatory system then there's the nervous system that allows you to perceive what's going on all or, or going that what's going on all around you then you have uh, the digestive system do you get what i'm saying all these different systems all combine to make a uh, the man so in other words all these different aspects operate as a team I don't know why God chose to do so. That's why I said in his sovereignty. But when you look at it, there's always a system. In, in every team, there, is a, there are a, a, a number of systems that, you know, uh, what's the word? Undergird, sustain, and ensure that that team fulfills its purpose. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so, so um, yeah, I think that, that that's... Um, that's what we're saying it simply so teams are a group of people doing complementary tasks for the purpose of attaining or accomplishing a goal and this is a clear instance of it usually there are complementary uh, you know skills in every uh, team you know even in law firms we recognize it there are some people that they call them they call them rainmakers yeah so everywhere they are friendly with everybody everybody likes them and everybody's happy to give them work then there are some but if you give them a brief to write oh they can be there forever there are some people that will write 10 briefs but to say hello to somebody they don't know how to do it but god brings them together because they have different skills and together they make everything work I, we need to um th th this is not in the book but i mean it's in the book but it's not articulated this way so it's a point i think you should note everyone should be in at least two teams everybody needs to be in at least two teams it, it, the book doesn't say that way but it says it so everybody needs to be in two teams team a is a team where you are pursuing something that is bigger than you e.g the church e.g where you work you are pursuing something that's bigger than you your personal aspirations we are pursuing when we're in the church and in ministry we are pursuing the expansion of the kingdom of god the manifestation of god's glory the the the, the lost finding their way in the word of god being upheld those are the things we are pursuing and all those all those things transcend or you know are beyond us then team b is the, your team or a support system of people around you who help you or who help you develop who help you fulfill your own personal destiny and your personal purpose so everyone has god never puts you in, in, in solitary he never lets you remain solitary he always somehow puts people around you that one way or the other draw out the talents that or make you see the talent that is in you and and help you fulfill it sometimes they may help you fulfill it in a way that you don't even think is it's you know it's nice so they're nasty they are mean and then you say why should this person continue to be this way to me and that compels you to find whatever it is on the inside of you that makes you you know go beyond that person that person was put there as a destiny helper not just the way just just not in the way you thought it would be and then in some cases you have people who overtly bring you consciously deliberately bring you to the place of destiny and purpose but the thing is that you need to recognize that you need to be in one of these two teams you must be in a place where you are pursuing something bigger than you and you must be in a place where you have people around you who are helping you fulfill your destiny and purpose so so i think let's leave it at that for now so let's look at teamwork truths teamwork truths so the first teamwork truth is teamwork divides the efforts and multiplies the effect teamwork divides the efforts and multiplies the effect see what jesus said in luke chapter 10 1 and 2 after these things the lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face is anybody there into where he sent them two by two into where luke 10 1 and 2 every town and place where he intended to go therefore he said said he unto them i'm reading king james now he says therefore he said unto them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few 
So he then says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his uh, harvest. This principle, as anointed as Jesus was, as anointed as he was, the moment he finished uh, the temptation uh, in Mark chapter 4, the moment he finished it between Mark 4, 1, uh, Mark, I mean Matthew uh, uh, 4, 1 through to 17, the next thing he did when he finished, he started to preach, the next thing he did was he started appointing uh, disciples. The very first thing. Why? Even Jesus understood, in fact, even, to say even Jesus understood is not saying it correctly. Because of his antecedents, because he was there when God said, let there, it is not good that one should be alone. He, he knew, immediately he started looking for people. In Luke chapter 8, you will see that there were a group of women that were dedicated to providing provision for his uh, ministry. So while him and, and Peter then were walking up and down, these women were busy uh, acting as treasurers for the business of his father. Beloved, you get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? So, so, so there, were, there were only a number of cities that Jesus himself could go to. So he needed to prepare the way. So he sent his apostles ahead of time. Praise Jesus. So... Um, this is in the book but and it bears repeating and I think it's a point of great insight so I'll repeat it individual insight is seldom as broad and deep as groups when it takes on a problem this is another reason why you need teams I see it all the time when we're arguing points of law in my office you know we, we sit down we're discussing and, and I say what do you think and this person says what they think and that person says what he thinks and the third person says what he thinks and by the time I say what I think we have such a rounded argument and robust argument that there's nothing that they're going to say. In fact, uh, nine times out of ten, the thing they say in court, we've already heard it inside the office and we have the answers. Anyway, that's, uh, that's an aside. That's um, a digression. The second point is talent may win games, but teamwork wins championships. That's how John Maxwell says it. Talent may win games, but teamwork wins championships. This is the way I want to say it scripturally. Teamwork is what fulfills destiny and purpose. Teamwork is what fulfills destiny and purpose. Teamwork is what fulfills destiny and their purpose. David, and I want to give you some examples in the Bible. David had his mighty men, 600 of them. You see that in 1 Samuel chapter 30, I believe, verse 6. Daniel had Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Abednego. He had people around him. When, when the king said, look, if you people can't interpret this dream, I'm going to do away with all of you. He said, don't be hasty. And then he went in to his fellows, companions, and they prayed. And eventually, they got the answer. Do you get what I'm saying? So, it takes, it takes, uh, it takes, it takes a team to, to, to be successful. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. To con to contra you know to in, in contradistinction to contrast that point, I want you to look at of all the judges, there was no judge in the Bible that did not have a team of people that supported him. Barak, Ehud, Gideon, Gideon had his three hundred Abi. They all had people. Jephthah had his people. He had all the inhabitants of Gilead when he was going to fight. Guess the least, less the least successful of of of, of judges. It was Samson. Samson was on his own. So meanwhile, even though he was physically the most intimidating of the whole lot of them and lacked any fear, uh, Gideon was afraid now. But what is his legacy compared to Gideon? That he slept with the harlot or that he carried the gate of the city. Uh, to, what else? Was Israel proclaimed free? during his judge during the period of him being a judge the answer is no so so it's critical that we 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 find a way to plug into a team praise jesus because it is within the context of a team that we tend to fulfill destiny and their purpose praise jesus teamwork number three teamwork is not about you teamwork is not about you and indeed teamwork is not about you but as a matter of fact it is about you <laughs> and how you respond 
to an objective that is bigger than you i'll repeat that teamwork indeed is not about you but as a matter of fact it is about you and how you respond to an objective that is bigger than you to be a team player and to provide your talent the best platform to manifest to be a team player and to provide your your talent the best platform to you know manifest or to be put on display there are at least three things that you know you must look at doing number one there must be humility there must be humility you the person who's trying to plug into the team you must be humble and it is in the context of that humility that number two will then take place there must be a pursuit of the of a common goal there must be a, a pursuit of a common goal there must be a pursuit of a common goal so your humility in saying i want to be a part of this team and what it is doing will now make you right begin to pursue a common goal do you understand me the common goal that the team or objective that the team has three that team member or that prospective team member must be subservient to the common goal or objective he must be subservient when i say subservient i mean that he places his own interests behind the interests of the objective that is being pursued do you get what i'm saying and then there must be a willingness to perform for the team for there must be a willingness to perform for the team at a level that makes you an irreplaceable asset there must be a willingness to perform for the team at a level that makes you an irreplaceable asset praise jesus it, it would have been convenient for jesus to say look father <laughs> you are god and guess what i am god yes now you are god i'm the son of god so we are god after all kenichi modi is we are all modi so there's no makes no sense me yes now makes no sense what i think what should happen here i think angel michael has been extremely distinguished in his angelic career let him go and die for them Please, if he had that conversation privately with God, please tell me whether God was going to bring Koboko and flog him. God was not going to do him anything. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why Philippians 2 says he did not consider himself. I'm not, let me not say it. Let me not say it wrongly. Philippians 2, he says, he says, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Other versions will say did not grasp readily his godly his godliness. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and being obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Hebrews 12, one of my favorite verses. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, despised the shame. All of his, all of Israel came out. Sure, you know, all of Israel came out and were saying, Oh, 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 your God, save yourself now. Forgetting the day when he, he made the blind man see. Ignoring all those good things that he did. Do you get what I'm saying? He, he, but he, he, he put his own personal interest to one side in order to get the business of the team done. Praise Jesus. And he fits in smack on with the fourth point, which is a willingness to perform for the team at a level that makes you an irreplaceable asset. Because of what he did, God then said, I will now give you a name that is above every other name. He did something that nobody else did. And, and I used to say this at uh, Praise Sanctuary, and I'll say it again. It's been a long time I said it. When he was carrying that cross, please, uh, nobody should forget 
you know they had spent the night beating him that's why isaiah 54 says 53 says uh, and there was no comeliness about him and his visage was mad they had slapped him black and blue after all they were saying prophesy who slapped you by the time they do that one five six seven times now person i go down close so he wasn't looking handsome at that point in time they had plated the crown of thorns they had put on his head it was bleeding all over they had flogged him pharaoh uh, what's, i mean what's his name Pilate had scorched him so his back was bleeding but despite all of that he persisted that's why i said the day before he said father if this cup if if it's possible to take this cup but nevertheless my not my will but your will praise jesus i used to tell pastor val then oh at praise sanctuary sometimes i'll say we're going to do something you say uh where is the money coming from as i say, have learned that it's not it's not about whether the whether where the money is coming from is does he say we should do it if he says we should do it our job is to get there and say we are ready to do it <laughs> then money we show praise the lord uh, another verse of scripture i want to commend for your attention is luke 22 from 24 which illustrates the principle that teamwork is not about you And there was also strife among them which of them should be accounted for the greatest verse 26 but ye shall not be so he that is greatest among you let him be as the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of a god it's not about you it's about what god wants and the funny thing is that when you take care of what god wants then god will take care of what you want so if a surrendered life is the highest sacrifice a man can give to god then subordinating oneself to a team and the concept of teamwork is one of the highest forms of worship if a surrendered life a surrendered life is a life where a person is living his life dedicated to the ideals and purpose and directions of god when you are living your life that way then if you are subordinating yourself to god's purposes in the context of a team then it is the highest form of a worship worship isn't only when sister ig and sister ng and, NG and uh, right, Mila, they are doing their thing that's it but it's not part of it's not everything in fact it's very temporal it's, it's actual it's very temporal now the real worship is when we live here now and somebody just enter your front for road you say god damn what's this rubbish damn <laughs> 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 please forgive me <laughs> but that's the real test when somebody treads on your toe that your pinky that's really hurting you just throw your hands here what's this how patient are you I'm speaking to myself as much as everybody else i'm not not on anybody's case great teams create community number four you know great teams co create community the proof of proof that this book eh, is a is a secular interpretation of the bible yeah it is is never more highly seen than in this particular point that great teams create community yeah it's it's it here's this is a classic example of it so so let me just point you to some scriptures apostle paul said in first corinthians 12 for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members are of that one body being many and one body so also is there christ verse 13 for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be bond or free or have been all made to drink into one spirit go let's go to ephesians 2 19 21 22 ephesians 2 19 now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but are fellow citizens with the saints of the household of a god please tell me what is it is a household not a a community in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into an holy temple in the lord in whom you are builded together for an habitation 
God has always been looking for a family right from the foundation. He said to Abraham in Genesis 17, he says, look, I will be, I will be entered into this covenant with me and I will be a God to you and to your seed after you. Why is God trying to look for a family? What did you people do? Except give the man a headache. Yet, he says, I want you to be my family. So, these verses of scripture prove the point. You know, Jesus also said, yeah, I think it was, uh, I think it was in John 15. He says, he says, or oh, is this 17? He says, uh, 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 love one another as I have loved you. So shall all men know that ye are my disciples. In other words, identifying them as community. That thing actually takes place eventually in Acts chapter 11 where they say that for the first time they identified the apostles as a Christians in Corinth. Number five, adding value to others add value, adds value to yourself. Talent is meant to be a blessing to others. Responsibility and talent causes us to be a blessing by forcing the talent out on display. When you're a member of a team, your talent is forced out. Talents you have are compelled to come out, even though you, you thought you were hiding them. And the classic story, in my view, is in the Bible that illustrates this point, that adding value to others adds value to yourself, is the story of Philip the Evangelist in Acts chapter 5, where it says, and in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, Acts chapter 5 from 1, there arose a murmuring among the Grecians uh, against Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude and said unto them, uh, uh, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look out. Look ye out among several men for, um, of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Verse 5, and, and the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Ghost, and Philip. Okay? Philip. Yeah? Later on, Please praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Just to put it in context, eh? what they asked them to do, that King James jargon is obscuring slightly, is that they asked them to be dividing food. Do you understand? That's what they were asking the six men to do. So the men filled with the Holy God, ghost with integrity, etc., etc., to divide what? Please remind me, food. So every time they're dividing food, maybe three times a day, these men were responsible for dividing the food. But because Philip did that work diligently, he, be, he, trans, he, he, he moved away from Philip the deacon to become Philip the evangelist, father of four daughters who were prophets or prophetesses. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. This was the man that preached in Samaria in, in Acts chapter 8. The whole city was converted. This was a man that, he was the one that took the gospel to Africa through the Ethiopian uh, eunuch. Then he's the, I don't know about others, but he's, we know his own case. He's the one man that was in one city or was in the wilderness with the, the Ethiopian eunuch. And we're not really sure how he did, whether the Holy Spirit carried him. Whether he did time travel, whether they sent a aeroplane to carry him from heaven, whether AJ carried him, but sure he was in the wilderness and moved all the way to Azotus, over 25 kilometers away. Beloved, you understand what I'm saying? Because he chose to serve, see how God elevated him. And the same is applicable to you and to me. And this principle works not only in the spiritual things and in the kingdom of God, it operates in the secular as well. Praise Jesus. So, so his being is and the work, and remember the work was grotty work. Oh, I want to look at you, these people. Ah, now. I can imagine how people were, you know, if there are anything like our people here, complaining and complaining. Now you know you give me this one when you give me small. No chicken. Where are the chickens? Yes, he make. What you call it? Wrong? You know how people complain. That's the grotty work he was doing. But see what God elevated him to do. I pray for you. I pray for myself. Oh, that all our labor of love that we've been doing secretly, God will reward us with open promotions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. 
So, buy into the law of significance. Um, be, being a talent plus person, there's not much time, so I'll just wrap up with this. Buy into the law of significance. So, uh, you know, I cited to you the script, scriptural equivalent. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9. Two are better than uh, one. Even Genesis 2, it is not good that man should be alone. Praise Jesus. I, I've cited the example of Samson. How among the judges he arguably was the greatest failure because he didn't really have a team around him to continue his work and to actually you know emancipate the children of israel but i want to show you some people in the bible that operated with teams and were successful abraham had 318 people 318 of his trained servants in his house when he wanted to execute operation rescue lot genesis 14 318 people david had his mighty men of 600 first samuel chapter, chapter 30 verse 10. jesus in order to project the salvation that we enjoy today had 500 people he had 500 people you see that in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 6 they were the same people that he was sending out also in luke 10. it was those people who were sending or it was 70 of the 500 and then he had 12 disciples mark chapter 3 verse 14 and an inner caucus of three paul in order to do his three missionary trips had at, at the minimum at the minimum he had barnabas he had john mark he had silas he had timothy he had priscilla and aquila he had luke the doctor all these were people that allow us today read this book the way it is beloved you get what i'm saying do you get what i'm saying i've already mentioned that you must be part of a team a or the, if that is you must be part of two teams at the minimum one is a team that is bigger than you uh, has a pursuit that's bigger than you and be a team that is you know your undergirding in order to produce your own destiny praise jesus so 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 that's um that's uh, uh one point i just wanted to make also just in case before i run out of time you know provided you are chasing something bigger than yourself uh, sometimes the the team will will call you yeah there are times when the team will call you so you know they're, they're doing stuff and you can see that this is you can you can feel it's calling out onto you or someone within the team will call you and say you know what come and join this team so you for example how jesus called the first four disciples he went and called them it wasn't that they came and said you know jesus i'm available use me mm -hmm. they, he went and he called them then there are some in some cases there are teams that you will have to fight to get into do you get what i'm saying sometimes you have to fight to get into the team paul was kind of like that why his initial interaction with the lord was a divine epiphany where i mean he was spoken to on the road to damascus the disciples didn't readily take him on board they didn't take it readily take him in fact it was barnabas that actually opened the way and even after barnabas had caused him to interact with the disciples he still went away for a long time before barnabas went to fetch him again leading us into acts chapter 11 praise jesus praise the lord um i mean this one is easy uh give credit for the success to the team uh, there's no there's no there's no biggie about that one if you love one another then it flows that you give credit uh, to 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 those that god has placed around you to help your destiny come into fruition i i just pray that all all of this uh, has been a blessing to all of you um and i pray for grace for all of us to you know apply these words in our lives i want to ask anyone who's on 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 the call i mean watching live who's not giving his life to jesus when we say give your life to jesus it's not um it's not that you come and then you peg yourself to a chair in church no what we're saying is what it really means is god wants you to enter into a relationship with him as his child god wants to you to be his child and all that is required is for you to say these words and say them after me say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of the most high god admit me today into the family of god that i may be of the household of god write my name permanently in the book of life and when you come to take your people let me not be missing i repudiate everything of my past 
that is inconsistent with you may i live in a li may i live a life that does not offend you thank you father in jesus name if you said that prayer with me then you are born again please send sister bidi me a note please give uh, give the lord a round of applause for what she's doing and i thank her for the privilege of letting me come and share what little i know praise be to master jesus and the holy spirit god bless you richly i'll see you when i see you in jesus name